everybody everybody hello just coming back to you for another quick video we hope it's quick i might get long-winded but we're going to be talking about someone that's going to come up on the screen anytime now but people magazine did an article with this young lady and she told some of her truths we don't know if it's true and what she was actually talking about it kind of made her a consenting adult in a sense because we'll get into that a little later on okay but welcome to the channel that is Dale Chanel's 48th world welcome 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 come on in the room and we're gonna be talking about Portia Williams and what oh how her mom raised her what did Diane teach this young lady from being a little tot up to a grown woman okay what did she instill in her what did her dad instill in her you know she was raised in a very prominent uh activist type family more so uh on her father's side her dad's side um jose williams was her grandfather and he was definitely a, a real strong activist and aretha franklin was right along his side with um uh, martin luther king and people of, of color uh, marching for the rights of brown people or minorities the ones that are actually looked down upon because they don't make a certain income or it's a lot of racism or discrimination brought against them by being the minority okay but Portia Williams signing I don't know who she is anymore I thought I knew but I don't think I know because I thought she was letting the money chase her and not the other way around but it seems like Portia has gotten bitten by the entertainment industry bug and she's ready to sell her soul if she hadn't already done so okay I'm just saying I'm just watching and I'm looking and I'm not liking what I'm seeing. That's why I'm enlisting the help of my family to come in and talk with me about this matter. Because Portia didn't really seem like all this stuff that I see her getting involved in. And I'm like, she has a mother that's still living. And what does her mother feel about it? And I can't say that the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Meaning... Her mother has always been a very big willing participant to be filmed on the Real Housewives of Atlanta and showing the comings and goings on how her daughter Portia gets down. Okay, if you catch my drill. So it leads for me to think that Diane is okay with the way her daughter is acting out here. Okay, because you know Portia got a new spin off and she can't keep them hands to herself. But on the contrary, well, let's just take a, 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 a step back. This is when she was married to Cordell Stewart. And I think he was in some form of athletic organization. I don't know if he was a football player or a baseball player. He was some kind of player, okay? With a lot of notoriety out there. And uh, some things that he was like down low as well, allegedly. But Portia has always been in an upbringing of a church-going family. Very uh, evangelistic type setting she put forth for herself. Being a dutiful, dutiful wife, submissive wife. And she somehow got on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now at first I thought, as other people had thought, that the Real Housewives of Atlanta was going to be bringing, you know, some notoriety to black affluent people. And we were going to be introduced on how the upper echelon people live and get down in their businesses and their comings and goings with just living life. A lucrative way of living life and being successful. But as we have been shown by Portia Williams and all her antics, she has been through several men looking for love after she got divorced from Cordell Stewart. And she just went wow, just went wow, just forgot about everything and everything she was taught, raised, brought up, high up, okay? Giving her the benefit of the doubt. But she got on this ratchet show, started messing with one in particular guy that she ended up getting pregnant about. And as we know, 
from the filming of the show. He cheated on her while she was pregnant. And she was going through a lot of emotional turmoil with filming and just dealing with the whole aspect of that happening to her and the downfall that was going to be, she's going to be talked about through the social media wavelengths. And yes, she was, but people were more so favoring her, you know, and, and, and hoping that she could salvage her family for the sake of the baby, you know, major mistake, because you always should be there for you and your mate. That's the only way you can form a happy union can't be for the kid and you sitting up there being miserable and still doing the same thing you know what i'm saying making like witness say you look like a piece of you know turd okay manure but anyway we got prince over there speculating with that one eye uh arched up like he don't quite understand what's going on because i'm still not understanding what porsche is doing out there in them streets either and as you know, as ratchet as the housewives got, she called herself dating or getting in the mix of something that just wasn't quite clear as a breakup between one of her co-stars, who which was named Fallon. And, you know, Portia was out there being a rebel, doing Black Lives Matter, having that empowerment, advocating for Black Lives Matter and, and equality for everyone. And she's out there preaching a good fight, doing a good fight with Sam totally on her uh, or surrounded by her doing this thing. And Dennis was down there like four flat tires with her. He was going to jail with her. Uh, he was protesting with her because there was a lot of uh, young people getting killed by the police. So it's like the minority people against the people in blue you know what i'm saying so we had that little thing going on about 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 a year and a half ago now and um somehow fallon came on the show and she introduced her rockefeller type who's been simon gobadia okay that's him on the right and he was a segment in one of her showings she was a new peach coming holding person and you know portia did the the unthinkable you know the unsalvageable of the repentance that she would have to do for the infraction that she may or may not have caused. But that's Portia Williams, you know, bringing that out on her new show. She dumped the Dish Nation. She dumped Real Housewives of Atlanta. And she said, forget it. I see stars and stripes and the American way and dream. And she pretty much said, like Witness said, she did not give a effing flying flip about anybody else. It was about her. She was the... HBIC in charge and she was getting all the money for herself she was gonna live for herself and you know being self-loathing of self meaning she was just really idolizing herself okay so somehow i don't know why i portion get pinned with these older men that's of course you know that's tom joiner and i don't know if they were acting out of play or anything of that nature but you know portion's cozy up with him and, you know, something like they're getting married, wear wedding attire type thing. And then we had a situation where Bolo was on there around Cynthia Bailey's second wedding on the show. And they were having her, ba not baby shower, but wedding shower. And somehow they said Bolo and a couple of the women, me and Instigating Portia was a part of getting down with the stripper that Candy had provided for them. And what Candy was at this time, I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> but they were trying to blame Tanya and Portia as being the ones that were really getting on the lowdown with Bolo. Okay. But anyway, we got this situation with, uh, it's going to be really shown on Portia's show. Her spinoff she got from Bravo. Um, the Pursuit of Portia or the Portia Family Matters. All of that's going to be entwined. Even her love child or her love ex-boyfriend that she had a baby by love child by he's invested in the show as well so i don't know what kind of contraption of a fictitious storyline that they got going on but she called herself loving on her ex castmate show now why they didn't keep this on the real housewives of atlanta let that be a storyline because portia got greedy portia saw things for herself so she wanted a spinoff so she's Taking this storyline of her taking someone else's husband, per se, allegedly. Portia got another story, and we're waiting for it to develop on November 28th to see how it really got down. Because we hear, we heard 
balanced side. We heard other people's speculations and other bloggers and YouTubers make their speculation. And Portia says she has hers, but the unveiling would be on her show. So it seems like Portia has enlisted her family members to make a royal fool out of themselves because ain't nothing really wholesome on these ratchet TV shows. And like I said, uh, the apple might not fall too far from the tree. Diane May, meaning Portia Mom, may have showed her the tricks of the trade or how you invest in older men and they take care of you for the rest of their life. You know, living like that white privilege type life. But Diane's black, of course, you see. Um, she knew what she was doing when she was getting into the civil rights uh, activist family. Because Portia's dad was related to Jose Williams. I, that was his uh, dad, actually. And, I mean, even that is hard to believe that they were a couple. But I can see, uh, you know, older man wanting somebody young. Nothing new. Nothing new under the sun. It's always been a thing with men uh, wanting someone much, much younger than themselves. I don't know if it's like a trophy wife or just to make sure. It seemed like they still got it and they could still pull it. But truth be told, they ain't there for you half the time. They're just there for what you can give them. But, of course, Portia quit all her daytime jobs. She quit Dish Nation. She quit the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And she was guaranteed, allegedly, maybe two or three seasons of the new show she got running, which is uh, Portia Family Matters over at Bravo. So, like I said, she enlisted herself. She knew exactly what she was getting into. And she, to me, it's like she's taking on a Jezebel spirit where she's just going to seduce and get whomever she wants. And right now, she wanted uh, Mr. Simon uh, to fill in as her sugar daddy, her fiance, her queen to her own throne in Nigeria. And I'm like, where's your mask? Where's your covering? All these people got covering over their faces besides you, Portia. What's up with that? Did you get the shots? Or what are you doing? You need to be just as vigilant as keeping safe as those people that are surrounded by you. That hopefully, maybe, I don't know, one day be your servants. But, again, I think Portia is chasing the money. She's not letting the money be fruitful and prosperous uh, towards following her and her endeavors. She's out there seeking, you know, the industry and what it can provide for her. She thinks she's going to be this queen on the throne. And he's going to be her ticket to living the good life. But from what I hear and all the records they have shown me from other YouTubers bringing the dirt on Simon. Chaddy saying all his stuff is leased. Okay. And you can pretty much say a lot of celebrities. They're leasing a lot of stuff. They're leasing to own. Not necessarily have bought it out. And they're collecting a uh, residue or not residue but re uh what do you call it uh residual money from it like it's they're getting interest from what they bought as property nine times out of ten they lease and everything and at this point Porsche's giving me about a headache the ones that wanted to root for her wanted to see her do well you know with the stuff she's pulling now it all seems like it's for tv it, she she has no love in it other than to make her money and she's not even really being a good parent right now because she's spending more time jet setting than she should be paying attention on her daughter <coughs> her only daughter and if she don't um, watch out honey if anything goes wrong or south with her show <coughs> i'm sure dennis mckinley is going to be the first one out there uh trying to sue portia for um not alimony, but child support. Because he's going to be willing and waiting to take the baby. If it not be for his mother to raise her. Meaning PJ. Because, you know, you could see Portia doing a lot of things. Now you just see Portia half the time on a beach. Or sitting in the sun in a bikini. Like, who, what, when, where? You didn't do this when you were trying to make your money on Dish Nation. And the Real Housewives of Atlanta. You were working. You had your hairline which i hope you still have and you have your bedding line and you were trying to come up with some other stuff but child lo and behold portia quit them jobs 
besides the internet selling of her products or whatnot but you know the ones that were actually you know formulating res residual money coming back to her she quit them like up out bam gone now she done tagged on something else that is totally incredible you wouldn't have even thought that she was a part of it and right now my spokespeople may they rest in heaven or hell wherever they may be not really sure they're speaking out okay and Portia called herself wanting to be a single back in the day when she was pretty much 25 is what I'm hearing or I'm getting from people.com on this interview they did with her sporting out her pursuit of Portia's book and a little story she got going on I'm like honey when they were alive Prince Aretha Franklin um Whitney Houston hell I forgot to put Luther Vandross up there but these were vocalists these were bad mama jammas and and, and now women and men well I can't they were like Rick James okay they were like super super freaks out there all right S sang us you know what I'm saying they could sing okay not sing but sing all right you should ask them, could you sing? And they probably would have told you flat out, no. <laughs> and the voice, the voice, Whitney Houston, you ain't have to do now, but just give her a little something. Like, -hoo 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 -hoo. you know, that, that she probably said, no, nah, baby, do it one more time. -hoo 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 -hoo. She's like, uh, I'm still not hearing it. And that's probably what she told Portia. She said she only really listen to singles. She may dim and dab, just give you the benefit of the doubt because she might like you. But they would have broke your heart and your feelings and said, hell no, you can't say no, no. Give it up. Go do something else. Be a model. That's what she probably would have told Portia. You got the body. You got the thing. You got the looks. Be a model. But, you know, if you didn't come out with this sensational story that you felt needed to be put in a book and broadcast it to the millions of people that would want to read your book, either by it being... You know, leather bound, and they buy it that way, and, and flip through the papers, or they, you know, bought it on ebook. Couldn't you have told your story when the shit was hitting the fan, when everything was just hot like lightning, and everybody and their mama, including this man's wife at the time, Drea? Couldn't you have come out there? Now you're going to wait to the pursuit of Portia and spill all the beans and say, You had to stand up for women's rights. And the uh, domestic violence and everything that it entailed. You had to speak up for women. You had to come out and put salt on this man's name. The Pop Piper. I'm like, are you kidding, Portia? Where was this situation happening? Millions of people want to know. And if this was a plot or a ploy to buy your book. If I had the time and the inclination, just because I was in the spirit of the holidays, I wouldn't even purchase it. Because totally wrong. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. Like I said, when every other mass is everybody coming out, men and women, children or whatever that was, you know, animals, they were being heard during that time. Now you want to come out and say this young man offended you in some kind of way or afflicted you in some kind of way girl that's just too much too much and i'm not buying it portia i'm not buying it on the the premise of you doing it to help other women i'm thinking you're solely doing it for a plot for people to buy your book and just be looking for those excerpts that you want to bring out forget about the other stuff you may be talking about this is sensational this is headlining breaking exclusive news and you you want to push your book to make money shame on you Portia shame on you shame on you but let's get into the people's um People.com, they wrote up an article on Portia and talking about this book that she is using as a plot ploy to make money off of a bad situation. Okay. But anyway, she titles it uh, Emily Strom or somebody like that from People's uh, Magazine uh, cast or uh, entourage or writing team. 
They titled it Real Housewives of Atlanta. Portia Williams reveals she spoke to the Popos about her own experience with the five Python. Okay. She said, I realize it was my opportunity to help anyone who's been hurt by him. She tells the People magazine. Portia Williams is opening up about the first time about her experience with Ah, you remind me of my Jeep fella and why she wanted to share her story with investigators. Okay, I realized it was my opportunity to help anyone who's been hurt by said man. Okay, she tells people in this week's issue there have been so many other instances where I have been abused by men that my mentality at that time was of an abused person and that it was okay for me to be treated like that i'm like okay so when did you marry cordell stewart how old were you then and did you not have jesus in your life because you sure was portraying that you had laid all your burdens down you had become a new creature in the lord and you are going to go on that path and, and you're gonna Hold a line and be very submissive to your husband, this, that, and the third. Well, you know, of course, Felicia Rashad wasn't he in that mess when they were talking about Cliff Hustable, okay? When they were trying to throw Cliff Hustable under the bus, she was steadfast saying, no, not my husband. He didn't do it. Everybody just won't press. And that's pretty much, you know, showing it up of how she felt about the whole situation and the comparison between those two you see on the screen. But going back to the article, it says, after meeting a friend of the Real House, uh, well, the R&B singer in 2007. Um, wait a minute, hold up. Something went wrong. Okay, 2007, the future Housewives of Atlanta star, then 25, and considering a career in music, was flown to Chicago to meet who kills and potential potentially work with them now again y'all know and i know claire is looking like and prince look like oh hell no where did you get the tuning or the ear fashion that you could hold a tune that you could hold a melody girl where were you who told you? Because it showed one like a Jackson that said you could sing like a songbird. It wasn't Aretha Franklin. It wasn't Will Smith. It wasn't the voice who we call Whitney Houston. Wasn't Prince. So who told you that you could break a tune, Portia? But anyway, going back to the article, she was flown out there to meet with him. Um, cause she felt that she could probably work with him. Williams said she expected to be driven to a recording studio when she arrived, but was taken to Kale's home instead. Okay. I'm like, Portia, you knew you were a booty call. You knew it. It wasn't that time of the, at the night time where you get up like two in the morning, one in the morning, three in the morning and call yourself going somewhere or you expecting company. You know, good and God doggone well. Even if you didn't learn that from your mama, I know you had some slick friends that was doing everything under the sun when that y'all were young trying to play dumb and innocent but she was out there wagging it like it was hot spreading it like it was wide okay so anyway um going back to the interview it says after an initial introduction to you know who we talking about who was found guilty of racketeering and sex trafficking in September. Someone led Williams to his bedroom and left her alone there for hours. I'm like, girl, I'm sure you kept your cell phone. So if you weren't being held against your will, so I know you could have left. But you know, you wanted to, you knew what it was and you knew what was expected. Okay, if you didn't know, you could put two and two together, even though we cautioned because you thought it was a train down there to take you to the Underground Railroad and y'all going to ride to freedom. You know, I, so, you know, I, I get it. I got it. Good. Okay, I understand that. I understand that. But we gave you a pass on that one. And we're trying to groom you and bring you up. And, and hopefully you will be able to be a better example for your daughter, PJ. So she won't go out here making all these Oh, insane, insane opinions and thoughts where people can actually hear you. So, um, going back to the um, article, it said, 
uh, when he finally joined her, she said he told her to take off her clothes. Again, Portia, it don't have to be nighttime for you to be called as a booty call, okay? He was some you were pimping out yourself, okay? I just hope you got paid royally for it and not just a flight out there and in hopes that he would work with you because he do work with folks. He worked with Mariah Carey, he worked with a lot of top artists that made hits, but them folks could sing. Now, we heard your little squeaky here to do, you know, singing a gospel possible tomb here and there but that's all girl and the other stuff you made it was kind of auto tunish so if you didn't work with the greats aretha franklin prince oh portia you didn't work with nobody and you can't sing baby you can't sing but anyway moving on from there he had asked her to take off her clothes. I've already put myself in this position. She writes in her new memoir, The Pursuit of Portia, available November 30th. This is what you're supposed to do. You have to. There is no turning back. Well, okay, if you want to treat yourself like a, a, a hoe, a, a, a stripper, a, a, a night woman, you know, what do you call it, woman of the night, instead of being empower, empowered like you were trying to advocate for black. And, and, and minorities and the people that were getting discriminated against. If you wanted to do that, you know, fine. Okay, fine. You joined the Ratchet TV show. We just knew what path you were on. But, hey, it was all about you. It's all about that dollar. It's all about fame and fortune. So, pretty much you had sold your soul. Even if you didn't think you did, you had. If you ended up over at his house, out of town in Chicago, knowing that you you already said in your mind this is a stage that you have to go through you have to pay you know up front so you can get that benefits in the long run this is just what you had to go through to uh facilitate and solidify yourself on the big screen or in the music industry so you knew this so you had already set yourself sold yourself for the highest bidder okay and at the time he was the hottest producer out there all right and then, you know, people reached out to try to clarify what Miss Williams was saying. Was it true or not to, you know, Kale's lawyer and stuff. They're like, they ain't want to get involved. The, the man already serving time. Ain't getting out no time soon. Ain't no sense to spark the fire again. No, we don't put it out. We don't douse it out. We don't want to hear no more. So if everybody didn't come out when the, the game was getting good, you might just hold your peace until you go home and meet your maker. And that would be the best get back that you could possibly get back. Because he only can do it the way he do it and everybody's satisfied. So, going back to the article, it says, William saw, uh, you remind me of my Jeep, man. Two more times and says in her book that she encountered several young women who also were staying at his home. She writes that she decided not to see him again after she woke up one day and heard a woman being, ooh, being hit on, okay, in another room. Now, I'm like, hey, why you didn't call 911? Why did you go back two more times? You see what I'm saying? You got flown out. Two more times. Or you paid your money to be flown out. To see him two more times. From what we're told. These women that he had there in his home. They couldn't leave. They couldn't go nowhere. They had to ask permission to go to the bathroom. They had to ask permission to brush their teeth. Wash their face. Take a bath. They couldn't just say okay. I had fun. We had fun. You know. I'll call you. You don't call me. Da 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 da. And then jet off back home. These girls couldn't go home. So. It's like you were talking out the side of your neck, Portia. And we're not here for it. We're not here for it. Okay? Um, then again, she said, for years she kept it a secret, even from those she was closest to. It's not something you want to tell your mom because your mom is a very strong woman. She didn't uh, want to think that she didn't raise you right, this, that, and the third. I'm like, Portia, it may have been going through your mind, but again... People that are mothers and they're in tune to their children, they can hint when something is not right. And for you to even go knowing the dimensions and the situation you had to place yourself into wasn't one that you should have been or anybody should be forcefully putting yourself into. So, no, baby girl, you can't blame the pie. Piper, you can't blame chaos you cannot blame him okay because at the at the time he was kind of liking people that were like 15 16 17 and you saying you were 25 
girl. No, 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 no. Wasn't really checking for you. If you wanted to be a booty call, he would pay for it. Just like your husband, you say, treated you like a trophy wife. And down low is how he was playing. You said that. Okay, on one of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, you alluded to the fact that he was that type of a man. Okay, so you saying you weren't dealing with no man. You were dealing with a man that was on a down low, allegedly. Okay, but going back uh, to the article, she said, but I was glad when I did. She was glad that I told her and we talked about it. Williams added, she told me some of her experiences and we just talked about how this should be told to other women. Don't, uh, that they don't have to go through it. I'm like, you went through it, Portia. You didn't listen to nobody, okay? You didn't do it. You wanted something. You knew from talking with other people about the industry and what you had to do to become a part of that climate or that environment. You knew what it took. And at the time, it wasn't a secret. A lot of you, haven't you heard of the casting couch? Have you heard of Hollywood, period, and how they get down? Child, please. No different in Atlanta. No different in Chicago. Same shit going on. Just a different day. Different month. Different year. So for you to even come out here and to exploit the situation that was paramount for some underage people that were getting down this way is per trash. Per trash. Per trash. Per trash. Okay. And no good come out of doing that to somebody just to sell books not a good look Portia. not a good look but that's all i got for this particular video guys if y'all like it love it gotta have more please don't hesitate but subscribe hit that notification button and you'll know when i drop new videos for you to partake of and as always if you don't mind please share out my content share my stuff y'all share me out okay all right don't stop till you get enough. Share me out and like my videos. And I will see y'all next time. Bye-bye. And don't buy Porsche book. Bye.